Hey folks, Aaron Ruppert once again, and I had some requests online from users for me to show the uh, vocal booth and the window I designed um, for isolation. So first I'll just go into, here's the window, and right on the other side as you can see is the control room, and there's actually a speaker only about a foot and a half away from the window. And here's the vocal booth. So I'm going to close this door here so you can hear the isolation. There's the mic, there's the window. I actually have music playing from the speaker in the control room. And then we'll zoom out. I'm gonna go to the other side and show you actually how loud the music is. Here's the first door. Here's the second door. There you go. Here's the buckle with window, speakers. So that would probably actually be a little louder than normal recording level if you were going to record um, vocals or a band or something like that. Alright, I wanted to get into the construction of the vocal booth um, here. The idea behind it and what made me construct it the way it is. So I essentially had one room here and I wanted to break it off into two sections. One, the control room side, which is over here, and then a live room side, which is over here. The first idea was to get as much isolation as I could and as much real estate in terms of recording in this size room. So I thought, well, we can make vocal booths in the center. Then we would have an air gap between this room and this room to contain the sound even more. And we would have different options for isolation. So for the vocal booth, I constructed it out of one single wall between the control room because of the space I had. The next step was, well, how am I going to isolate it? As you can see how close the speakers are, isolate it as much as I can from the control room. And the only way you can do that is with mass, meaning the amount of insulation you use, uh, the more mass you have, the more sound it'll stop. And so, this is actually one single wall, but it's constructed out of four layers. So you have the studs, and on each side of the studs you have resilient channel, which is strips of metal that hang off of the studs. And then you hang the drywall on those resilient channels, and you don't have the drywall touch the floor or the ceiling or the side walls, so essentially the drywall's hanging, and that absorbs all the vibration. So you have the drywall hanging on each side, so the sound that does hit the drywall on the control room side vibrates on those resilient channels, but never goes through the studs to this wall. So that really helps contain the sound. After that, you have drywall on this side. I put a layer of a vinyl barrier, which is the black vinyl that's really thick, and it helps stop the uh, highs from coming in. After you do that, you have to think, well, what about the low end? Low end travels through walls easily. Bass frequencies, the waves are very broad and large, so it's hard to contain them. So after the vinyl barrier, I put studs on the walls on the vinyl barrier. And then between the studs, I put thick, rigid fiberglass um, insulation. I put uh, two layers of that. And that acts as a bass trap, so essentially this whole vocal booth is a bass trap. Um, and it's on the uh, rigid fiberglass is on the other side of these, this uh, fabric here. And with the fabric, it also helps stop the reflections in the vocal booth. And it helps isolate the bass. So essentially I could use this as an um, isolation booth to record bass amps or anything like that. You know, uh, guitar amps. And you just close the door. And then you have an ISO booth for that, and you can record your drums over here. 